On Gibbet Hill, overlooking the local rural community, stands an unusual ruin. A politician and soldier, General William Bancroft, in 1906, set about building his ornate retirement house here. The estate was to be named Shawfield Mont. After a short period of time, he ran out of money after building just the tower and a smaller stone house. After a decade living there, he then sold the house to a local doctor, Harold Ayers, who used it as an upscale sanatorium. This establishment flourished during a period in which such fashionable retreats for the rich were popular. These patients actively searched for a home away from home and an escape from the crowded sanatoriums and state hospitals of the day. The doctor's patients would pay $80 a month for the fresh air and treatments there for their tuberculosis in a private setting. However, by 1930, the sanatorium closed and the building became a dance hall and social event center for fox hunting. Finally, one festive day on the 4th of July, 1932, an errant firecracker or firework set the building ablaze and it was destroyed in the fire. The remnants were torn down in 1960 along with the nearby barn. Today, it sits alone on the hill, a subject for ghost stories of disembodied gallows victims and passing photographers. As we first ascend the muddy and slippery hill skirting the adjacent bull's field, the tower quickly juts from the horizon, followed by the stone house ruins. It's a dark and dismally gray winter day, and the golden yellow stones stand slightly out from the more subdued tones of the skies around it. Vines cling to its top walls, almost obscuring them. Twisted trees ring the top of Gibbet Hill, circling the ruin. To the left was a dirt driveway leading down the hill, running in a cleft to the road below, where a tree trunk horse post and stone gate still stand today. Walking into the entrance, one is immediately confronted with two arches, likely meant to impress the visitor. While I have found that seemingly no house plans exist of the site, it would appear this room would have been a large living space, maybe with a kitchen, with a stair leading to the second level near the right corner. Above the first fireplace is a second one on the stack and then a distinctively shaped chimney jutting above. To the house's rear stood the tower, which extends another two stories above the house's attached second story. On this second level, it's easy to imagine bedrooms for the patients at the sanatorium. The tower itself would have likely held a master bedroom and attached rooms for the doctor. From this bundle of rusted pipes would have come the water supply for the building. We head back through the arch and up the hill towards the tower.
Looking up, it's easy to see how this three-story tower was meant as a centerpiece of the house. It must have not only afforded great views, but been very warm from the fireplaces burning at this time of the year. At the very top are crenellations and a large window, likely for the exact purpose of taking in the surrounding countryside. It may have been more of a viewing platform than anything else. Perhaps General Bancroft was inspired like Gates, who wrote of his own restoration of his tower house, Thor Belly Lee, in 1928. I pace upon the battlements and stare, on the foundations of a house or where. Tree, like a sooty finger, starts from the earth, and send imagination forth, under the day's declining beam, and call images and memories, from ruin or from ancient trees, for I would ask a question of them all. New owners have been kind enough to allow hiking access here more recently and even added a handrail. As we wrap up the visit, we notice fresh fur mixed with the snow. A rabbit has been recently killed and plucked clean. And as if on cue, hawks circle above. Fur leads to a nearby bush where it was likely eaten. I have been here at the tower through the seasons, and the full beauty of this place comes when nature returns to its walls and decorates them with the bright reds and greens. It is unlikely the old general or the doctor thought within such a short time that their ornate tower house would end as a picturesque ruin on a hill. If you ever have the chance, I urge you to visit Bancroft Castle and experience this special place for yourself. That's it for today. As we head into spring, we are kicking off the new season with a bang. Join us next episode as we take you through a huge abandoned and decaying ward for the violent and criminally insane at one of the United States' largest and oldest mental asylums. A special thank you for your support goes out to George Case and Margaret Small. Subscribe and explore with us today.